this week I did it my way I made lots of juice And now I feel a boost Baby say oh It's the way I make my juice Press in fruits and roots This week I did it my way Baby say oh Now let's have some fun There is nothing greater Than Friday's act of nature What's up, my juice love birds? Welcome to Good Nature Radio. This is your host, Charlie Wetloff. We're joined by the two top juice business consultants in the world, Jeff Ari Sexner, author of The Juicing Companion, and Olivia Esquivel, founder and operator of Southern Press Juicery. This week, we have a very special episode. We're going to be talking all about Ari and Olivia's list of essential juice bar equipment and supplies. We're going to go everything from blenders and smallwares to refrigerators, merchandise displays, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, before we get into that, just a quick announcement. We do now have lower prices on our cases of glass bottles on the Good Nature Marketplace. If you head over to goodnature.com, the 24 packs start now as low as $1.30 per bottle. So I believe that is the cheapest price on the internet for heavy-duty reusable glass juice bottles. Um, and if you buy a pallet, 12-ounce bottles, we start at $0.60 cents a bottle for the pallet. So wow. check that out. Also, don't forget, the Juicing Level Up weekly mentorship call program has been going awesome. Uh, we just had yeah. a really, really good episode this week. Um, we went over – one of the members brought their actual financials from the juice bar – we went over that last week, and then this week Ari had reviewed their recipes and gave some tips on how to make the recipes more profitable. It's been a lot of fun. We had 18 people in the last call. Um, everybody's hanging out right to the end. So if you're listening and you're starting a juice bar, think about starting a juice bar or have a juice bar and you need help, I think it's an awesome program. So you can do that at goodnature.com slash level up and sign up and join us for our next call this coming Tuesday. And you also get access to all of the previous call recordings with all the downloadable documents. Um, so check that out. Okay. Favorite juice bar equipment. Ari, go. No, I'm just kidding. Let's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, uh. <laughs> all right. So Ari, let's get the juicer. Have you, even, have you even set up a juice bar before, Ari? <laughs> You put me under too much pressure. No, so Ari, Ari's <laughs> made pro probably like literally probably like... 500 equipment lists. <laughs> um, so let's start. Let's get the juicer out of the way. Let's talk mm -hmm. about the juicer. Um, basically, if you're running a juice bar, you have a few options. You have the M1 if you're doing made-to-order juice, Good Nature M1. If you're doing bottle juice, you have the X1 Mini, uh, which in a realistic scenario will get about 30 bottles an hour as long as you have a good process there and then if you're doing lots of packaged juice cleanses and stocking refrigerators you've got to go for the x1 which you can get 100 bottles an hour um i've seen more actually i've seen like even up to double that but i don't think that's a realistic number most people are going to get you know 50 to 100 bottles an hour on the x1 and that's it for the juicer so that's pretty straightforward i think but let's yeah. um so one of the most popular topics on the Good Nature Juicing Facebook group over the past week was discussion about blenders. Mm -hmm. um, so let's talk about blenders. Um, Ari, why don't you start with, like, let's say a generic juice bar that's doing juices, smoothies, acai bowls. What do you recommend for blender? Yeah, so there's, there's, there's three major kinds of blenders. Okay, you have your your standard blender that has its base, its top, and it's open. Okay, mm -hmm. the second variety is the enclosed, quiet noise canceling shield on it, and then the third one I guess would be like a bulk one, like a larger mm -hmm. juice uh, blender, like the the XL model uh, that does like a gallon at a time. I like the standard blender. You know, and that's uh, the hot topic between me and Olivia, Olivia and I, <laughs> because I, I like the standard blender because I like the versatility of it. I like the ability to go and have one machine be able to make my acai or smoothie bowls and smoothies at the same time. 
I think the noise level is the biggest con for that, but I think it's not too loud. I mean, it depends so, who's using it. So, so you're saying you don't even use the quiet version? You use the regular? Right. I don't. He likes it. Yeah. Tell him why, really? Ari. Tell him you why. Know, well, because Ooh, Charlie's I mean, leaning towards me. I can tell already. Go ahead, <laughs> well, Ari. I'll tell tell him why. I remember. Do you remember that uh, uh, Alton Brown? He was a person on the Food Network a lot where he broke down like the science of stuff. He used to come across yeah. tools that were just like single use items. He'd always take it and he'd throw it. He'd be like, there's no space for single use items. So yeah. I feel that noise canceling blenders are a single use item. It's it's there for smoothies. Why not have one blender that can handle both? Uh, so by single use, you don't mean you use it once and throw it away. You mean it only use it for one Pet product. It only one use product. it for for smoothies. Because at does, first I thought okay. you were saying you throw away the the blender. <laughs> throw the whole blender. I'd throw that. <laughs> yeah, I'd throw it right out the window. But uh, no. But I, what I'd... Chef likes is he like he likes the one yeah. with no top. You didn't even tell him, Ari, because you like the tamp. Yeah, I like the oh, tamp. Likes, I don't want to. He wanna... likes it without the guard because he likes the tamp because he likes to be able to you know to to maneuver. And most of the time, that's going to be. I haven't seen a blend tech like that, so that's going to be a Vitamix most of the time, right? Yeah. Does I one mean, tech have you, one with a tamp? No, I, th I think so. Oh, I, I don't. Let me I, check. I, I have sure. both. I have both uh, brands, but <clears> I don't have one with. I don't have a blend tech with a tamp. But he yeah. likes to be yeah, able to yeah, maneuver. Blend, blend tech does. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It, there's nothing more frustrating than starting it and they're like, oh, all the true. products on the side. Stop it. Give it a little tap. Put it back on. When you have the tamper, mm -hmm. you could just give it a little tap. Yes, but <laughs> I do happen to know the person that made the masterclass course about producing oh. acai bowls. Oh, this is me, guys. This is me, Ari. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is, this she's is where an I XL. Get... She used an XL in that video. I remember because I was there during the filming. That's right. Um, That's right. So, now, uh, okay. So, it's... sorry. So, so, your opinion, number one, for regular smoothies, do you use the quiet version of the blender or do you use a regular blender or do you use the XL? Me, I use a regular one for everything. No, I mean for, for Olivia. Yeah. Okay. I will say I have all of those three options in my juice bar. Okay. So I have a Vitamix in my front of my juice bar. I have a Vitamix that has no quiet lid on it. I have a Blendtec that has the quiet dome on it. And I have a quiet one up top. So... You're talking to a girl that makes smoothies and bowls for a living most of the time for many years. And I'm using all three of them. And I have an XL Vitamix in the back where I'm doing bulk. Okay. I don't disagree with him that he, the, of why you would like the, you know, it's annoying to, to, to have to lift it, the quiet sort of soundproof dome and then take it out and use the tamp. And my professional opinion. I think that the blend tech version of the quiet one is the best smoothie maker blender in terms of consistency for smoothies. I regularly experience that I only have to blend it one time. I don't have to go through a second round to get rid of the chunks. Hmm. However, I will not allow anybody in my juice bar to make an acai base in a blend tech. Because it just it overheats, it overpowers, it shuts itself so down. They, it doesn't have take the right blender, blades. Put it away, and, and I they, throw it away. They pull up the no. other blender from no, the back. They Jeff. carry it all the way from the course, back and put it up. No, oh, okay. Of course not. <laughs> I have a beautiful line of blenders. Mm. Nobody has to move anything. So, so for that reason, Blendtec. If I could buy, you know, if I was on a limited budget and I was starting my juice bar, for that reason, Blendtec would not be my blender of choice is my number one blender if I could only buy one. I would probably go with either the Vitamix with no soundproof like Chef likes or the quiet one. I do bowls in both of them and have no problem. Okay. Um, I think it could also be the way in which we make our recipes. Chef and I have, and I have two different methods. I really don't think one is better than the other. They're just two different ways to skin the cat in terms of how we make our smoothies and how we make our bowls. They're just personal preferences. So for that reason, the one, the way that I do it, the quiet dome works fine for me for making bases. 
Um, but chef likes the tamp. I will say when I'm making acai bases in bulk, like for a BOGO situation or for a busy weekend, I do prefer to use, and I'm making, you know, a lot of one flavor. I do prefer to use my XL blenders and I do keep those in the back of the house in the kitchen. And I do like to use the tamp for that. I was about to go well, into a tip, a pro tip, I but would, I held my tongue. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it. <laughs> I, I would add on an XL if I was making large amounts at a time, for yes. sure. You know, but I just feel strongly that that tamper is... Yeah, it's the a great thing nice. to have. And, I don't disagree. I mean, with and, you. and just to be clear for people listening, by tamp, it's like a basically a, a stick you can push through the top to move stuff around. In there, yeah, right? to mm -hmm. move things around. That's what we're talking about. And, and I'll say, yeah. I didn't have an XL blender for, until many, many years down the road. I started with just Vitamixes. Um, I think I started with quiet ones. And then, you know, along the way with deals and, you know, shows and all that stuff, I've kind of acquired a little bit of everything. Um, but you certainly, you know, when I started out, we were making bowls, one bowl at a time. Now we make them, we make the bases in bulk. So that's kind of how I grew into the XL. I don't think you need an XL. They're very expensive. I don't think you need that starting out, but it is lovely to have if you're making specifically your own almond milk as well, or own nut milks in the kitchen. So like chef said, it's a dual purpose. You're using them for two things. So it's certainly a good investment. But yeah. And I, I think you made a good point too, because it also depends on your smoothie style. I don't have a personal preference for smoothie style, but I, there's some people that like the the thicker smoothies, mm -hmm. you know, basically where it will have like a peak on it. And mm -hmm. there's, I mean, I would say with clients I've worked with in in Europe and, and Middle East, they're familiar with a lot thinner smoothie mm -hmm. style where it's almost like the top is lay flat, uh, where it's it's almost like you added a puree to a juice, you know? So it's much different than a lot of us are familiar with. And if I was, had products I was making like that, I, I would probably consider going with the, the noise dampening one with the mm -hmm. shield. But I mean, if, if I was doing any kind of bowl or smoothie, smoothie bowl or acai bowl, I would definitely skip the, the noise dampening one and go standard blender. Um, yeah, yeah so the Blentec there. version called Blentec Stealth is the quiet one, mm -hmm. is the version of the Vitamix quiet one. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So I, I guess happy. my, I don't have an opinion on XL <clears throat> versus regular size, but the noise thing for me as a guest walking into a juice bar that doesn't use those noise dampening shields to me is unbearable. But I'm extremely sensitive to that noise. Like when my wife is vacuuming, I have to like leave the house. Like I just hate that high pitched motor mm -hmm. noise, you know, and mm -hmm. like the noise mm -hmm. from the blender. So for me... Um, I don't know if I had a juice bar, I would definitely use the you quiet ones out front. I think there, there is like some kind of skill to actually lower that noise, <laughs> you know, cause I have been to places where they just go straight to a hundred, like max. Mm. And that's where it gets really loud, especially oh, that larger. True. Yeah. When, larger when you're doing pieces, it slowly, so it's not too bad. It's then most better. of the noise is just the stuff in the blender and not the motor. Then if you're going slow. Yeah. Yeah. Charlie, what about the noise for the X1? Does that bother your ears? Just curious. Well, that's normally in the back of a house. So Right, I know, but I'm just saying, does that is that the same kind of noise for you? I'm just personally wondering. No. No, I it's it's not the noise of like a blade cutting stuff. It's the noise of those cheap Chinese motors. Like in a vacuum <laughs> cleaner. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. those little handheld vacuums. Oh man, yeah. just drive me crazy. <laughs> you know, good nature is made in the USA and Buffalo. Yes, and our so motors are noises. like these our motor, motors are these heavy They're duty delicious. two horsepower. Like, <laughs> yeah. They're delicious just, motors. Yes. Oh, what a what Great. a sexy beast that thing is. Okay, moving on. Yeah. After blenders. Okay. Wait, before we move on. Okay. What about Vitamix XL versus food processor? This, oh, is okay. like a this is a good question. Yeah. I probably, opposite then, I'd be on the food processor side. On oh, that my one God. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you take that XL and <sighs> throw it out, replace it with I a mean, food processor. No, this is good, though, because this is like, if you go on the Facebook group and you see people recommending blenders, some people are like, oh, only use Blendtec. Some people are like, only use Vitamix. Right. Like, there's, you can get the same thing done with both, right? And I think the... Yes. Same thing is probably going to be true with this question. 
Yes. Yeah, because okay, food processor versus large, larger format blender. I mean, larger format blender, you could do a lot of production on it, but I like the food processor. You can make all kinds of uh, dips for grab and go items. You can make tons of dressings. Uh, okay, but own... see, this is where it, this is where he turns all chefy on us. Think yeah, about a lot. juice bar production. <laughs> Focus on the prize here, juice bar mm-hmm. production. Can, can this is a question milk. because I don't know. <laughs> can you make almond milk or a nut mm-hmm. milk on a food yeah. processor? Okay. No, All yeah. right. Yeah. Fair. Again, I, <laughs> I mean, have both. It, so <laughs> the, the only drawback, though, is when you do a food processor and you kind of unhook it and you do yes. fill it up all the way with the the mixture and then you pour yeah. it out and the blade kind of comes off and it starts yeah. dripping. Okay. You okay. Be I was thinking part, maybe but... I had a cheap one or something cuz I have a RoboCoop and let me tell you every time They're I great. try to use that thing, I want to put my head in the RoboCoop. I hate <laughs> putting that thing together. Oh no. It is the no, worst. I love it's, it's like big it big heavy worst. parts. Then you have to lift it out no. and it drips everywhere and like Yeah, so and yeah, there's like maybe better. I can, Oh, I love that. I hate that thing. <laughs> oh God, you're such that's a chef. Best. That's because you like to make like <laughs> you know little. Yeah. I mean, and you stuff. can even. I I never use them, but they got those attachments where you could shred stuff and and dice uh, and slice. No. Not for me. But I mean, it's yeah. it's Not awesome for, for making you could sauces, julienne dressings. ten pounds of carrots in five minutes, right, Ari? <laughs> it's got that <laughs> opening. You could like stream in your grapeseed oil, make a nice dressing, or. Yeah, so I I agree it's more versi- versatile. Um, but if you're just doing smoothies and nut milks and acai bowls, probably there's not that much of an advantage, I wouldn't think. Um, and the nice thing about a blender is it's just that nice plastic pitcher you just pour into whatever you're using. Nice. One thing to think about though is because it's it's a little more narrow at the base versus a food processor. You can heat up products a little bit right. quicker in a blender so yeah I'll put a little more i mean vitamix even advertises like I you can make you. soup you can make soup in a vitamix if you let oh, it yeah. run long enough mm-hmm. yeah soup. and that's one thing i don't i don't like about the xl i don't like that it doesn't automatically shut off because i'm a multitasker so if i'm in there and i'm making a base or i'm making you know um an almond crumble or I'm making, you know, I'm, I'm pulverizing something and I put that big XL on. This is also what I don't like about my version of the Vitamix in the front. That's not the quiet one. It doesn't automatically shut off. So you put it on a number and then you got to remember to shut it off. If not, you'll start making a smoothie soup or almond butter (laughs) instead of like almond slices. I, I prefer where it's going to shut off like every 30 or every 60 seconds. Because I'll start multitasking, you know, like I'll go and wash dishes or I'll go and I'll whatever. And then before I know it, I'm like, God, that I'm waiting for it to automatically shut off. And now I've made like split pea soup or something. Okay. Can you save <laughs> presets in there or no? No. Next uh, They probably have some. I mean, but, I mean not you... in the version I have. Hmm. Olivia's like doing dishes and like, ah. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. Noise? I'm oh, like, that's still been right going on for like, <laughs> like... <laughs> two hours. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. hot almond soup. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a, a, a almond bisque of the day. No, I mean for my RoboCoop, the food processor, we put like Brazil nuts in there, and we make like a Brazil nut crumble, and you know we'll put almonds in there. We were sourcing sliced almonds. Little pro tip: it was super expensive, um, and we were already sourcing so many almonds. So I just cut that out and started just pul- pulverizing the almonds in the RoboCoop, which was really nice. I make all my raw vegan cheesecakes in there. Um, some just really delicious, you know, like chef said, you can really sort of manipulate all of the, the textures that you get out of there, like all of our yeah. protein bars and little energy balls and stuff like that. We make all of that in the robo coop, but in the Vitamix and the XL, we make our best selling almond milk and, you know, those suckers are going all day and then I can whip out like, you know, a quick 12 bowls in just a minute. Can't do that in the RoboCoop, so. Uh, I'll use a blender up front. <laughs> yeah, no, it doesn't have enough capacity, <sighs> chef. It doesn't have enough capacity. Uh. <laughs> All 
All right, uh, moving on. Olivia, you're going to move on to some other equipment before I interrupted you, I think. Yeah, I was just going to say some of my favorites for front of the house, um, particularly behind the smoothie bar. This is something that I've seen like when, when clients will come to us sort of after they've already been open or they've bought their equipment or they've gone, you know, to, um, to an auction or something. I would just be really careful about buying used refrigeration, number one. Um, even if you're buying it from a place that was brand new and it just hasn't been turned on in six months, I would definitely do a test sort of, you know, time and make sure those units are running and have them checked out. But what I was going to say is my favorite freezer for behind the smoothie bar are drawer freezers. I don't like the doors. I like them to be drawers to pull out. And so my favorite unit is like a Bev air freezer, metal, you know, steel top, um, freezer drawers. It's got four drawers and that's my favorite. And then within those drawers, you can divide out what size you want the little containers to be. So if you have strawberries, blueberries, acai, you can make one really big, or you can get a smaller container. You can use bases that you've already pre-made and you want to keep those cold. So that's my favorite. That's one big mistake that I see all the time is people will open, will buy the drawers of the freezers. Yeah. And that's so inefficient. Um, and you doors. bang your knee all the time. That I agree with you 100%. There's nothing more frustrating <laughs> Finally. than closing Jeez. that door and then <laughs> trying to open it. And it's like, yeah, because once you close it, then it seals like, and then you try to open it. Yes. It's the One, worst. If, and if you're tight on space, I would definitely. So they got those uh, basically like the sandwich prep carts, you know, mm -hmm. where it's, it's the drawers you pull out. And sometimes they'll have to make it a sandwich prep cart, it will have the drop in refrigeration from the top, you know, yeah. where you can lift the lid and then put all your products in there. If you are tight yeah. on space, get that one as a freezer and mm -hmm. you could buy a smaller refrigeration unit to go on top that could have mm -hmm. your drop-ins because normally in, in a smoothie operation, you're going to have a lot less fresh ingredients that just need to be refrigerated rather than frozen, you know? Right. So that's, that's a great option for you as well. Yeah. So my favorite setup is to have my blenders on top of the freezer, the drawer freezer um, unit, and then have the sandwich prep refrigeration unit to the right of it. But again, that's like you said, mm -hmm. if you've got a ton of space and you, you know, um, and then to have a dump sink, we were talking about that yesterday with a client. It's really important that's the best. next to your blenders. If you can't get, uh, and I don't <clears> have this, but that really fancy dishwasher that shoots water straight up. Um, like you see that on Starbucks a lot, those would be like just amazing to have, but just to have yeah. a nice dump sink, just remember that your dump sink cannot be the same as your hand washing sink per department of health. Mm -hmm. So that's gotta be different, but just make sure when they put in those pipes, you tell them you want a dump sink, and not a regular sink. Yeah. Um, that way, you know, if you've got any huge chunks of anything that hopefully you would fish out anyways, but just the thickness of smoothies being washed out, you'd have a, a lot more success with the yeah, dump. Sink try to there. have that hidden and, and like tucked down. A yeah. Like bit. an under sink. Mm -hmm. So is that like what bar bars have behind mm -hmm. the bar? It's like a low mm -hmm. sort of wide sink that they can just dump yeah. stuff down. Yeah. And you want the basin wide enough to be able to fit that blender top in there. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, and, uh, so for the dump sink, for the blender top, you say it needs to be wide enough to fit in there because you put it in there or you rinse it in there and then it's like a, take it's it out. It's like a sink, like in your kitchen, yeah. only it's got bigger tubes so that, you know, it's not going to get backed up. But so for me, yeah. it's, it, mine's almost like a double, double wide sink almost with just one basin. So, you know, after we've got, run through blenders, we need to rinse them out to make them fresh to start another um, recipe, we just, you know, we just rinse them out with hot water and then go. Mm -hmm. And then there's a dishwasher in the back of the house in case we have some sort of like allergy or something that we really need to do a, a like a sanitation situation yeah. for them. Yeah. But the top would go right into the, the, the sink. Yeah. You know, you want to make it sure it fits in. Mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Yep. Um, so, all right. So I've also seen smoothie bars have the open top refrigeration with the produce there mm -hmm. almost, almost like an ice cream refrigerator why do you prefer the drawers over that well, it, it depends on where it's being placed you know <laughs> if if you have it in a certain area where that's on display then that's that's a nice option to have but the drawers as opposed to have it open top the 
doesn't freeze it as well. You know, the tops are kind of thawing out and the base is really frozen solid. And at the end of a day, it's kind of like a solid block. So the ones that are like open, that would be like my standard refrigeration unit For versus like a raw, freezer. Just raw produce. And stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Um, all right, Ari, how about some standard sort of small wares you should have around? Uh, one that I, I don't see as often as I should is tasting spoons and, and juice bars, tasting cups, mm -hmm. you know, little, not like little souffle cups or little to go little containers. Two ounce cups, yeah. I think that is <clears throat> so important to have on every single station, you know, whether your, your smoothie bar up front, your people in the back of the house, you want to get them employees accustomed to trying and tasting everything all day, every day, you know, so having those available, uh, really helps versus having people grabbing like a water cooler cup and mm -hmm. tasting uh six ounces of juice rather right. than a little sample of an ounce container. I think that's extremely important to have. Uh, also, I think knives, like mm -hmm. cheap knives. I think a lot of times people try to get too expensive uh, of knives for their kitchen and they, they really overthink it. But you'd go into a lot of restaurants, uh, nicer restaurants, and people have cheap, cheap knives, like twenty dollars sharp chef knife. knives. Yeah, yeah. And the reason for that is you have your nice knives. Uh, keep them at home, or if you're at like a Michelin restaurant or fine dining restaurant, yeah, bring them bring there. It. Yeah. But you're in a juice bar, and it's super important to have an extremely sharp knife. So get something cheap and have a really cheap sharpener where you just pull the knife through it's it's shaving off the metal and getting a a, a nice clean cut because you're not going to have time to properly sharpen the knives every day on like a whetstone or or something like that so they're probably going to get dull so i i think it's important to have cheap knives with a a cheap sharpener you know just that every day you just pull it through and and they're sharp for that day yeah. And I think I would add to that to have some paring knives in the front of the house. Um, I've noticed lately, you know, small wares are things that somehow like grow legs and walk out of the juice bar. Like, I don't know where they go, but you'll order 20 paring knives and then you'll find one. And then I'll see an associate like trying to pop something uh, uh, like, let's say mm. frozen bananas on a sheet pan and they're trying to pop it off with a paring knife. And I'm like, what are you doing? Like, you know, that could easily pop, that knife could pop off and some remnant of it could stay. Um, so use things for what they're intended for. Pairing knives, you know, front of the house should always have pairing knives to be cutting their fruit and just some nice like flat spatulas, metal spatulas that you can use for your frozens when you need to break those up. Don't be using the tip of a knife. And for me, I'm sort of a spatula snob. I don't really like a regular kitchen spatula when I'm you know, scraping the sides of any of my blenders. It's just too fat for the bottom where the blades are. So I like to get, um, I would say they're probably like an inch wide, right, Chef? Like an inch wide spatula. Yeah, those are my favorite. The rubber they're, ones. Those are my great. favorite ones. They uh, they use them a lot. Sometimes they call them like risotto spatulas. Yeah, yeah. those are my you favorite. Know, they're, they don't look like a standard spatula, but it's kind of like, it's real skinny. Almost the same size. All the way down, yeah. Yeah, those work great. Yeah, those are great because they get underneath the blade and, um, you know, I just, I just, that's something in my front of the house I always try to have. And then, you know, obviously they need measuring cups. Make sure that people are measuring their recipes and are not just eyeballing things, that they're following it by the recipe book because that's what your food cost is based off and that's what your retail price is based off. So if people are just particularly in spring and summer, as you start to bring in some younger folks that are wanting like summer jobs and volume is going up, make sure that they're actually using the tools. Um, I like to have a lot of times I'll save all the little scoops that come in the protein jars and I'll use those as my scoops for dries. So I just have a ton of them and I like to make sure everybody has a scoop in every single dry because I don't want them cross using scoops. Um, so those are just some little things in the front of the There's house that a, just make life easier. Yeah. And with, with knives, you don't need but all these different styles of knives, you yeah. know, that chef knife, paring knife, yeah, maybe a serrated knife, Yeah, you know, for like cutting watermelons Bread. or large melons, serrated knife works great. Right. Better than a chef's knife. I think a couple things that you shouldn't skip on either 
are is a really accurate scale. Mm -hmm. Scales I like to find when I'm doing production. The only requirements I have are it goes up to 40 pounds mm -hmm. for standard operation, easier read uh, when you have a container on top, and then uh, something that you can either plug in or use a battery. Right. You know, and believe it or not, make sure it's NSF because <laughs> I got dinged for that one time. Uh, oh, really? Surprisingly, like I, I was talking about earlier, like it doesn't really touch produce. I don't know why it needs to be NSF, but yeah. I guess it's important to have that and also get a really accurate uh, infrared thermometer. Mm. I think is really important, especially when you when you're doing bottle juices, mm -hmm. uh, it's real easy just to take a temp, record it for your cold hold, log, and uh, move on. Yeah, and all your refrigerators need to have a have, need to have a thermometer inside too. Department of Health is going to require yeah. that. So I always just ask my equipment guy. I'm like, hey, like I don't know, once every six months or something. I'm like, can you just bring me like seven new thermometers? They're super cheap. They sit in your refrigeration units, um, and you'll need those for Department of Health. Um, one, one important aspect of a scale that I've found is it's really annoying if it automatically shuts off after like oh, a minute or that. something. Oh yeah. Cause then you, you go back and you have to re tear it to get the yes. weight back to zero. It's really annoying. So that's terrible. I would just make sure. Yeah. Just make sure it doesn't have an auto shut off feature. Yeah. Good point. Um, which I think that might be more common in the battery ones. So get one you can plug in like I already said. Mm-hmm. Uh, or if it has an option like the plug-in or a battery. Um, oh, one, one thing that popped into my head is, uh, <clears throat> cooling wands for the back of the house, mm -hmm. which I really like. Good one. Yeah. They're like these things you freeze in the freezer, like these big paddles, and then you can stir your juice with them to cool the juice down to temperature before you put it in the refrigerator. I, I really like those personally. Yeah. That works great. Especially when you're tight on space. Mm -hmm. in the back area because you can have the juice right on the counter yep. and it's actually chilling and warming up. <laughs> yeah. How about uh, merchandising displays in front of house? For juice or for retail, like non-juice stuff? Uh, for both, I guess. Like, or just what are like okay. useful merchandising displays? Um, okay. For, for t-shirts, I really like to have... Um, I like to have things folded and I like to have things hung. So a lot of times I will like hang my t-shirts, you know, like you would see in a retail with really nice, you know, like go to a Target or go to Amazon or something like that and buy nice wooden hangers. They're all the same size and they're all the same color and you just need like one single unit, again, depending on space, single rack and you hang up all of your merchandise there. Um, one thing that I'll do is like when I'm buying staff t-shirts, instead of buying like the minimum 24, I'll buy 48 and then I'll hold like half of them back for staff. And then I'll try to sell the rest just to kind of try to recoup my money on that purchase. Um, cause that can be pretty expensive. Um, I really like to have units that are eye level, um, or taller that are almost like little cubby holes. You know, that's sort of what I have, like cupboards almost. And then you could fold some shirts in there. You could put some bagged granola. Um, I've always been on the hunt, uh, for, um, you know, when you go to Whole Foods and you check out and they have those like little three tiered baskets that are at the checkout line. I love those. I love to put like granola in those or cups in those reusable cups. Uh, I know a lot of juice bars sell like reusable straws, any sort of little thing in there, anything that you can keep as close to point of purchase into the computer <sighs> system or the payout system as possible is awesome. And how about like displaying juice? Near the cash register or something. Okay. Yeah. That's another one that I think I've had every single refrigerator known to man. Uh, you know, of course the sexiest refrigerator you could get isn't what they call an air curtain where it's like, you know, there's mm -hmm. no glass and you can see it and everything's sitting up all pretty. But I have found that those can be really hard to maintain with ambient air, um, maintain temperature, which is really important with, with the kind of work that we do. I mean, if I had Cokes and Sprite in there, you know, it'd be fine, but I get really worried about the temperature of those things and getting ding for department of health. And when I had an air curtain, 
open fridge like that, I found that what I would do was I was so nervous about the juices that were in the front that then I would push them back and I would leave the front row empty, which as you know, is like against my religion. So I, I just hated that. And it just felt like I was always trying to rotate things. And I was just spending too much time in that. So what I like is either if you're a really small operation, I like a stand up one door glass door um, retail fridge. My favorite is a two door um, even if you don't have that much juice yet and you can start out with that, I would, you know, produce as much as I can and then even have, you know, some, um, your backups on the bottom so that you can refill. Some people will put produce bags in there and they'll do like little produce baskets, which I think is mm -hmm. a great idea. Um, but I definitely like it to be a glass door. I can put little signs in there, you know, that say 50% off or special, um, and I love that to be right next to the point of sale system. To yeah. me, that is 100%. I have to have that next to the register because I want to be able to be at the register and talk. I want to be able to sample. I want to be able to upsell. And if it's all the way across the juice bar, then they've made their decision before they ever get to me. They're not going to leave line to go and get something else if I'm trying to upsell. So I want that thing really, really close to me if I'm at the register. Yeah. I, I don't have a lot to talk about retail, but with the juice bottle display, definitely. I always tell people like we were in a meeting with a client the other day, Olivia and I, and we're like, don't get the largest one available. You want to yeah. make sure it looks full at all times. Yeah. Close it up too. Cause especially in your hot, humid place the day after it's going to shut down cause it's working so much harder. I, I, the idea of, uh, I, I also like the idea of having small samples of the juice mm -hmm. in that display fridge so people can come up and try the juice uh, without needing to ask you for each one. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I love that idea. I also saw a few places, uh, a great idea is where they have kind of like an ice sink next to yes. a point of sale system. Yes. And they have like a one of each bottle there and they can talk to them and that. give samples. Yeah. That's an amazing option. Just there's nothing more appetizing than a nice bottle of juice and ice, you know? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that way you I can need to get one to of those. It's, yeah, you gotta get one of those, Libya. It's nice. Yeah, where do you get that? Like web strong? What is that called? Ice, it's like an ice bin. Ice bin sink. sink. Ice bin sink. <laughs> oh, it's, it's an ice bin sink, I think. Yeah, I'm sure they're on. Sink. Sure, they're yeah. on Webstrand store. Yeah, it's just basically a sink with a drain. Yeah. Yeah. Um, any other cool stuff we should look at, Ari? I was. I should have saved that ice bin sink. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about steamers before. Yeah, uh, like you frothers, know, steamers. Yeah, yep. yeah. They they have uh, a steam ones where I mean, if you don't need the full coffee setup and you want to offer warm lattes. You could have those machines set up to next to a, a water main or a water line and uh, be able to just have those steam ones and, and froth uh, your lattes, superfood lattes to order. Yeah. That's a great thing to have. Give people mm -hmm. a nice, frothy, warm superfood latte. Those are great. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I've tried everything under the sun. I don't have one of those yet, but we've done, you know, regular frothers. We've done tea kettles which, you know, just scolds the milk on the bottom and then every ta mm -hmm. everything tastes burned. I mean, we, we've done everything. And I finally just got a microwave because I could not get things to the temp that I needed to get them to, especially if they're, you know, they place the order and then they don't come in at the time. And then it's like, you have to redo them. So I need one of those steam things. You know what? Never mind. Don't use that. We'll what? use a blender. Oh my God. We'll just use a blender. I'm going to put we'll it in them your in favorite blender. blender and I'm just going to let it run. Charlie's going to come in and a blender is just going to be <laughs> blasting all day. <laughs> God, who's vacuuming in here? God, I got to put that blender away before <laughs> Charlie comes. And then Olivia's oh staff gosh. will be heating up tacos in the microwave. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a sign that says no tacos on my microwave. <laughs> I get so mad. You know I get mad about that. Yeah. Oh gosh. Yeah. The lattes have been a hard one. You know, they sell so many of those yeah. things. Now you go to damn Marshall's and you're in the checkout line and they have all these things that look so cool about like, you know, stir your matcha and all this stuff, but they're all yeah. residential use. They're really not for getting it to a high enough, um, temperature. So that steam, when I looked at it before, it always had a coffee, at least what I found had a coffee component to it. And I'm just, I'm, 
I haven't done that. You yeah, know, I'm not. No, you can definitely get the standalone steamers. And I also just think it's a great experience for the guest. Yeah. When they see you doing that, it's like a barista, like making you yeah, drink. Yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, not just pouring some hot liquid out of like something. It's you know, like yeah. you're actually sort of making it for them. And it makes a cool sound and it looks cool. The yeah. Steam comes up. It's pretty nice. That's awesome. Yeah. Good, good uh, suggestion stuff. That's good. Yeah, if anyone listening, if you'd like help designing a custom equipment list mm-hmm. for your juice bar, unique to you, uh, we will do that for you. Head over to goodnature.com slash radio and fill out the form there. And um, we can schedule a free consultation. And join us, goodnature.com slash level up to get on our next level up call. Yes. We're yeah. going to be presenting an all new recipe calculator spreadsheet, which will help you calculate how many pounds of produce you have to buy, what's it going to cost you, what your food cost is for your recipes. So. Ari and I I'm, have been working together on that. So I am we'll waited this with, Tuesday. I'm waiting Charlie. with bated breath. <laughs> I got a sneak <laughs> preview. It was it's pretty awesome. Yeah, I gave Ari a preview wait today. To see it's, that. it's coming along. That's yeah. huge, guys. That I mean, that's really that's like half the battle of running a juice bar. Yeah. No, it'll, it'll be fun. I'm excited yeah, it's about awesome. it. Awesome. Cool. All right. Well, All everybody, right, have guys. a great weekend, and see you next. Oh, next week we're featuring uh, Chris Good, founder of Ruby Jeans Juicery from Kansas yeah. City. Really awesome guy. Met him several years ago. He started with one location, expanded to multiple. Now he's in Whole Foods, he's delivering juice to public schools, That's getting awesome. involved in like local politics. He's doing it all. Awesome guy. He's really best. excited to have him on next week and catch up. So. Right. All right. See you guys. All right. We'll see you then. Bye, guys. So now I feel a boost. Baby, say, oh, it's the way I make my juice. Grass and fruits and roots. This week I did it my way. Baby, say, oh, now let's have some fun. There is nothing greater than Fridays at Good Nature.